fancy. But yeah, so I'm here to talk about the evolution of online ordering with Nando's uh, for the next 10 minutes. I'm going to try to go through where we've been over the last 16 to 18 months and kind of just give you an idea of what we've been doing with Split. I've been leading the implementation of Split on the web, like website. I want to say the website, but it sounds exactly the same. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd start with what our ordering experience looked like before. And as you can tell from our customers here, they were really, really happy with waiting in line. Um, <laughs> so it looked a little bit like this. You'd, you'd go into the restaurant, you know, you'd be seated at your table, you'd have your paper menus, and then you would head to the tills, right? We, you might have been to Nando's before, but if you haven't, this is how it's done. And you know, you're going to send in this queue, you're going to take the order. But there's kind of some bottlenecks with this process, right? So you've got staff members, as you can see here, they're on the tills pretty much permanently. You've got people who, let's say you're with your family members, you're in a group of four people, you probably might have to jot down all of your order on a piece of paper or on your notes and go and take that to the till. And then when you get to the till, you'll find out that what you wanted was out of stock. So you're going to have to change your order. Or if you've decided to go on a cheeky date to Nando's, cheeky Nando's, uh, you know, you're going to have to leave the person that you've come with, right? They're going to have to go sit on their own while you go and wait in this line with everybody else. And they're going to be sitting on their own for 15 minutes. So it's not a great process, right? And then fast forward to March 2020, and all of our restaurants need to close. And we need to shut down temporarily. And then when we do reopen our restaurants, who remembers this, right? So eat out to help, eat out to help out. You, know, you can't can't leave your table. You got only if you're allowed to go to the toilet. And then uh, yeah, so ordering from the table and table service that's that seems to be kind of the kind of the norm now, right? So we have to come up with a plan, and the plan went a little bit like this. So in the first phase, we had two partners. We've got Vita Mojo for collection and for order at table, and we've got Deliveroo to handle you know Deliveroo, right? Delivery. Deliveroo looked a little bit like this. We all know what the livery looks like if you've been on there. And uh, you know, you, you've got your Nando's, your Nando's items there. And on the left, you've got Vita Mojo. And yeah, you know, it, it looks like Nando's aesthetic. It looks and feels like Nando's, but it's not quite Nando's, right? These are these are platforms that we've used in the first stage for when we reopen. And this is what we're going to be doing. But ultimately you can see on this on the on the right there, we've got stage three, which is we want our own Nando's platform. We want a platform where we can experiment. We want a platform where we can release new features. We don't have to go to a third party to ask them to implement the features. We want to hire developers. We want to set up an entire tech team of people working exclusively at Nando's and move away from these third parties. Ultimately, delivery. we still use delivery for fulfillment, and we still exist on the delivery marketplace. But we still serve our delivery uh, through Nando's platform in stage three. And then you can see there's a question mark on stage two. So how do we get from stage one to where we want to be in stage three. What's going to be that kind of question mark in the middle? So we started having to think about it. And how do we bridge that gap? So when we looked at our current feature flags, you know, this is a rough example. You've got your A and your B. You either got A on the left or you've got B on the right. You know, it's either off or on, it's a light switch. You're either going to see a feature or you're not going to see a feature. But how do we get from stage one to stage three? safely right so we don't want to go big bang we don't want to uh you know just release it straight to all of our customers there's huge potential risk with that if it's not working we've just talked about the risks of continuous delivery and you know releasing features too fast and too often so we need to think about how can we you know gradually roll that out to our customers and, and limit that kind of risk so i stole this from split um <laughs> <laughs> So you've got your dev team, you've got your QA, uh, you know, you start testing internally and you start, you know, releasing, releasing uh, you know, features. You can release them to Vita and then you can, you know, release to everybody. But then you've got this portion on the left, which is the, you know, the continuous delivery, the progressive delivery. And what about when you want to go to 50% of users or you want to go to 5% of users? Currently our feature flag systems don't let us do that. We've either got A or B, there's just no in between, right? We can't say, well, we only want to show B to 5% of users with our current like implementation of what we've got. And what we wanted to do when it came to order at table was we wanted certain groups of restaurants, you know, they're, they're going to continue to stay on that platform, right? They're going to be in that control. They're going to be restaurant A and restaurant B. But they're going to have restaurant C and restaurant D, which are going to be part of our test group. So these restaurants are going to be prepped on, OK, here's the plan. We're going to be migrating. We're going to be using a new platform, getting them up to speed on what that looks like and how the customers are going to be interacting with that. 
so the idea was we will have the QR codes at the table. You might have seen these. And it will link to this brand new page. And this gives you the option to say, OK, I want to use the app or I want to use the website. So you know, most of the, most of the time, like, you're going to have, OK, we're going to be going 100% to Vita Mojo when you click on that continues the website. And that's kind of where Split comes in. So using the targeting rules, we can set up exactly what we want. We want restaurants that are in a list of our pizza restaurants, you know, restaurant A, restaurant B, uh, and restaurant C and restaurant D. In this case, they'd put me in crew. Those are two restaurants that we've got. And those will be serving the Nando's treatment, right? And then everything else, you can just be sent to Vita Mojo. So that was our first kind of implementation with Split, where we said, OK. And what did the data say? Well, the data said our Nando's platform conversion rate was actually lower at 15%, and our average order value actually reduced by 4.3%. But we've got our own platform, right? But something feels missing. So when we launched our new platform, customers then need to register for an account to access the menu. So this doesn't feel that great, right? You know, you hit the menu. <laughs> this is just loop. <laughs> this is looping back and forth. This is not a bug, I promise. Um, <laughs> But you get the idea, right? So you've just clicked continue to the website, and you're greeted with this form. And now you need to log in. You need to create a profile. You need to sign up, do 2FA, you know, provide us with all of the details and, and that sort of thing. And it's not a great process. So let's change that. So now you can add items to your basket without logging in. You can hit the menu. You can start building up your basket. But you've still got to log in. And you're still facing the same problem, right? So this is one of the features that we built. And now you can add your items to the basket and complete the checkout as a guest. And using that method of 5%, 50%, we managed the risk with that, where we started rolling this out to our customers gradually. Once we'd gone beyond that kind of you know, restaurant beta group, this was now being released into segments of users. Um, and what does the data say? Well, it turns out that our customers actually preferred using guest checkout. As you can see here on the right, as soon as we release that feature, um, you know, in the green, that's where guest checkouts really started to, to take over. And actually, to our surprise, our average order value increased 0.7%. You know, the kind of uh, the, the view was that perhaps, you know, this might not be what we, we want to, to find out, but actually, you know, it turned out quite all right. So let's try something new. Uh, so in our basket, for example, we have recently been uh, rolling out an upsell. Um, you know, you've got your, your top items there, you've got your bottomless Coca-Colas, your Halloumis, your Perinases. Um, and this is one of the features that we've been working on really recently. And that actually generated an increase of revenue of 0.6%. So you can see here, that's how we've kind of been rolling out our features recently with Split. And I quickly wanted to talk about operational resilience. So kind of going back to the last uh, presentation that we had, um, so one of the things that we've been thinking about is, OK, we can release great features to people. We can you know, uh, move ourselves over to this new platform. But how do we make it more resilient to the point that we don't want to you know, have to wait 30 minutes for our deployment build? You know, I call that the need for speed or lack of. Um, so in the case where something goes wrong and we need to change something, you know, we need to now look after this platform and think, OK, well, we don't want to be releasing a code change that takes 30 minutes. It's not great. You know, we've actually built a new build environment. <laughs> and that's actually taken about 10 minutes. Um, but again, it's, it's still not good enough. Um, and that's, again, where we've really looked at Split and said, OK, well, what can we do to kind of intervene? So we've built our kill switch feature flags into the code base. So they're there and ready for when we need them. Um, and they look a little bit like this. So this is the home page that you'll hit where you're going to either order, collect, or delivery. Um, and at any given point, when we find you know kind of an issue that's happening in one of our backend services that those um, you know features will be relying on, at the drop of a hat, we can go into split and we can quickly turn off delivery, or we can turn off collect, or we can turn off both, and all of those can happen directly in split. We don't need to push a code change. We don't need to revise any of the code and then undo it and then you know, catch up and make sure that somebody's raised a ticket to, to, to undo the thing that we've done and keep doing this. It's a thing that we can do again and again. Um, yeah, I've kind of plowed through a presentation. <laughs> <laughs>